When it comes to Godzilla vs. Pokemon, not a lot of people tend to look in the general direction of some of these legendary Pokemon. Now, yes, Godzilla is the king of monsters and is the king of versus battles. I mean, this dude has barely lost any crossover matchup with the Avengers and now with the recent Godzilla and Kong vs. Justice League now. It actually makes you wonder, does anyone really beat Godzilla out of, well, any verse? And when it comes to the Pokemon verse specifically, people always go for Groudon. It's either, it's either Groudon or no one. But people tend to overlook the sheer fact that there are Pokemon more powerful than Groudon. Monsters or at least Kaiju like Regigigas or Rayquaza. And that's what we're really here to talk about today here. Is the real winner between Godzilla from the IDW comics versus Mega Rayquaza from the Pokemon franchise. So without further ado, let's really begin here. And we're gonna start off with strength. When it comes to strength, IDW Godzilla is one of the physically strongest beings in his verse, only being rivaled and possibly surpassed by the likes of King Ghidorah and Destroyer. This Godzilla, specifically, has been able to not only kill God, but kill a Satan amped space Godzilla, has embarrassed the Greek gods, and thrown around monsters that eat celestial beings. This is important to note because again, this god or god's mountain if you will, was able to create the void and the universe with a thought. And Godzilla was able to kill god's mountain like it was absolutely nothing. Kill this Satan amped space Godzilla like it was nothing, all right? You even have the sheer fact that Godzilla is killing monsters that would scale relatively above that instance as well. For example, King Ghidorah, who has been consistently portrayed as much stronger than Godzilla, was able to literally tear through a dimension and pull Godzilla into the underworld in the first place. So again, Godzilla was scale relative, if not superior, to King Ghidorah on some occasions. And this is important for the scaling because you can actually say that IDW Godzilla, which is considered the strongest Godzilla, does outclass the Marvel one who has multiple outer versal level feats. So this Godzilla would again be into the, I guess you could say into the mid tier of outer versal, which would be the Skyfather tier. But let's move on to Rayquaza. Rayquaza himself has demonstrated that he is one of the physically and one of the most powerful in general Pokemons when it comes to, well, any battle. He actually goes out of his way to not only protect humanity from the Weather Trio, but from other powerful Pokemon, including the Creation Trio, which is very important. The Creation Trio themselves are actually living and pure concepts of the entire Pokemon multiverse, which is infinite in size. Pretty much infinite in size and shape, honestly. It has so many dimensions to it that even just one of them could collapse it, destroy it all. Palkia, space, Dialga, time, and Giratina, reality dash antimatter, or reality and antimatter, with Giratina being the strongest member of the creation trio, and Rayquaza was able to go toe to toe with him and was able to even knock him around more consistently than Giratina was able to do to him. This is important because Giratina is stronger than po Pokemon like Cresselia and Darkrai as well as Regigigas, who has been able to go toe to toe and even manhandle Dialga and Palkia, who again are the embodiments of space and time, and they desperately needed their Haxes to actually be able to, you know, get this dude off of them. And Cresselia and Darkrai actually scale to each other because of their lore. They're actually known as equals to each other. One representing good dreams and one representing nightmares. Meaning they're both the concepts of imagination for the multiverse. Putting them at an outer versal level. Darkrai himself has been able to go toe to toe and even harm Dialga and Palkia when they're both having one of their sibling tantrums. Now yes, Darkrai did die during that, but the fact that he was able to ease Stagger, push them around, and even harm them on some occasions puts Rayquaza's strength level, sorry, puts Darkrai's strength level in a category that most Pokemon would not even be able to reach. This would translate to Rayquaza, who is equal to Giratina, 
who is massively, massively superior to the likes of Darkrai. So when it comes to their physical strength, you could argue either one could actually be stronger than the other. And I wouldn't even, you know, it wouldn't even be a bad one as well. But if you, I really had to point out here, I think it is better if they were equal. I think it's more realistic that these two are equal in strength rather than one being able to take pretty much over top the other. Yes, you could say Giratina has fought you know much stronger characters with the creation trio avatars but then again you could also say godzilla has been able to you know fight against characters that can create voids or stop chaos itself while again the feats are there you could still say that they're equal or one being stronger than the other but for me let's say that they're equal in terms of speed godzilla is no slouch he's been able to tag monsters like zilla who are massively faster than light considering that he's able to dodge his atomic breath consistently and godzilla has been able to react to lasers all right being able to react to gigan's laser pulse and megalon's electro cannon which is pretty similar or pretty much equal to each other putting him at 300 times the speed of light or faster than light to inaccessible or at least immeasurable speed concerning he's fighting characters that can not only fly through the vacuum of space within mere seconds, but he's able to fight characters like Batra and, you know, Rodan, who are faster than characters who can navigate space with ease. However, when it comes to Rayquaza, he's pretty much one of the top Matter of fact, he might be the fastest Pokemon, legendary Pokemon out there. Being able to blitz characters like the Creation Trio, who have omnipresent speed, because they are actually vast, pretty much their singularities across the entire multiverse, they're always there, and yet Rayquaza has been able to blitz them. He's been able to blitz Hopa's Rings, which are pretty much him crossing entire dimensions, meaning entire universes, meaning he's crossing infinite dimensions or infinite planes themselves. He should easily scale above the likes of the Light Trio who actually travel through Ultra Space, which is a, again, a nut, pretty much like a dimensional means of travel, honestly. So Rayquaza himself is an absolute unit. Matter of fact, he's an absolute demon when it comes to speed. And if you add Dragon Ascent to it, which increases his speed and allows him to perform one of the best striking power defeats ever, then this means that Rayquaza would literally have infinite, inaccessible to immeasurable speeds, respectively. All right, so when it comes to a speed category, Rayquaza is superior to Godzilla in that department. Sure, Godzilla has reacted to faster than light than immeasurable monsters, but Rayquaza is reacting to omnipresent beings and is actually blitzing them. So again, Rayquaza is significantly faster than Godzilla. When it comes to durability, I think these two can definitely be seen as comparable. However, Godzilla does have a healing factor. He has a regenerative healing factor to where he can heal from being stabbed in the chest, being pierced through his heart, having, you know, these life-threatening wounds just inflicted upon his body. And if he's arousing radiation, he'll take it. Yeah, that, that's some extra healing points for him. Shoot, we ain't no, ain't no if ands, or buts about it. He, he'll take it. Plus, it's even described in the Godzilla, um, which I'm gonna call it, in the Godzilla, sorry, Rage Across Time comic where he fought Zeus. Zeus actually doesn't be afar him. He actually rips Godzilla apart to the point where he sends him to Tartarus, and Godzilla legit was so angry that he reformed himself. And he went to kill Zeus. So imagine not only that you try to just splatter this guy's atoms, but and send him to um, basically your version of hell. But he comes back a lot. He comes back to life, and just still kills you. Absolutely insane. Now with Rayquaza, his durability is absolutely ridiculous. Now, it's not known if he has a healing factor or not. We do know Pokemon can heal from these life-threatening injuries and even being able to resist conceptual erasure. And Rayquaza is one of those Pokemon. He's taken attacks from, well, the Creation Trio, Hopa, 
Kyogre and Groudon, as well as Kyurem, who can freeze and attack on a molecular level, if not a subatomic level, because he's able to freeze and shatter metal with ease. And yet Rayquaza took all these to the face and body and got back up like it was absolutely nothing. So in terms of durability, Godzilla has the edge because of his healing factor. However, Rayquaza is not that far behind. As a matter of fact, they might be equal in terms of durability. It's just that Godzilla has a slight edge because of his healing factor. Now on to Haxes. And when it comes down to it, Godzilla does have a very good arsenal. He has his ato trademark atomic breath, which is should be stronger than monsters that can just physically, you know, beat him up. And even if his claws and teeth don't work, his atomic breath, more often than not, is able to get the job done. It's even able to destroy containment fields that were specifically designed and made to contain his overall power. And yet with one or at least two atomic breaths, it's done. Like, it, it was just made for that. Let's not forget the nuclear pulse, which is considered stronger than the atomic breath. All right? So in all honesty, the nuclear pulse here is meant to also, could pretty much just tear through opponents that were meant to be immune to his atomic breath. And it's a good defensive measure. Now, we move on to the Red Spiral Ray, a, let's see, pretty much just this ultimate attack, this fusion mode, if you will, where Godzilla's able to absorb his ally's life energy and then just start using it to decimate monsters like uh, Magita, who was able to take out every other monster on Earth, and Godzilla had to use this form as pretty much a last resort, even using thermonuclear pulse to pretty much just decimate everything. And this was a monster, again, that was significantly stronger than him and all of his allies together. However, Rayquaza has more. His signature move, the Hyper Beam, has just came a long way in general. I mean, this is his... It's his go-to move. And the thing is, he does not waste stamina. He continuously can pump this and push it out, even moving afterwards. He can use Dragon Pulse, which is a one-hit explosive move. All right? Meaning that this issue, it's, um, it's kind of wrapped most of the time. You then have things like Draco Meteor. Uh, I mean, this is an omnidirectional blast that can be used for a plethora of things. You want distance? You got that. You want to get multiple opponents? You got that. He also has Dragon Ascent, Hurricane, Outrage, every Dragon-type attack, including Ice Beam, which is an absolute, which is an absolute plus, honestly. Then you got his move, Twister, which blocked attacks from the Creation Trio and the added measure of Hopa even using portals to try and cover it. Well, sorry, to try and um, overwhelm it, and it still didn't work. So, in all honesty, when it comes down to these two, yes, Godzilla is a beast. Godzilla is an absolute ch chad. But when it comes down to it, Rayquaza is a whole nother category on his own. I think if these two met and if these two went at it, it would be a very good fight. It would probably be one of the most destructive fights I think Godzilla has ever had. But at the end of the day, I see Rayquaza pulling through more often than not. He's faster. He's just as strong. His durability is good enough to even take attacks from Godzilla. And he's a lot more versatile. So in all honesty... I think this is the reason why I would believe Rayquaza wins more often than not. I think Rayquaza would actually take it six times out of ten, while Godzilla would take at least four out of ten. Not saying Godzilla would never get a win, but Rayquaza would take a large majority of the wins. Even if it's, even it's a five out of ten, Rayquaza would take the first win over Godzilla. But hey, that's going to be all for today, you guys. Be sure to comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share it to your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.